attention, please. Please remember to use the hashtag, the platform innovates, when you're posting all those powerful nuggets that you hear from Mindidi and you've heard from the other speakers earlier today and you would hear. Welcome. <laughs> I think that round of applause should be for Pastor Kpojo and Pastor Toin. No, hold on. You know, they continue to shift conversations in this nation. And they dare where nobody would. And you may not recognize how the nation is moving in the right direction simply because of this platform. So we honor you. Thank you very much for what you continue to do. Is that, okay, great. Um, I'm very excited about this platform today. Because once again, Pastor Kwaji is shifting things. When I think, I don't remember when anybody has ever gathered intrapreneurs as a collective. Never. We always see professional associations or trade unions driving things in the context of their own industry. Never has anybody said, all the intrapreneurs in Nigeria, come inside, let's talk. This is the first time. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So today, I will be speaking to the topic, the intrapreneurial revolution. And it's in the context of innovating our way into the future. The platform team had done a brilliant job in defining the word entrepreneur. But you know, one of the things, I don't have a clicker. If someone is controlling this, please. Let's go together. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And just make sure you touch me so that the blessing will be crossing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So I hope I know how to do this. Great. So, I mean, we've learned an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur in essence. That's the truth. But focus on the characteristics. Highly self-motivated, pro active, result-oriented. That is what qualifies them to be called entrepreneurs. And then we think about them actually pursuing innovation of product and service. Typically, when we hear innovation, we also think technology, correct? But guess what? All innovation must start with the innovation of the mind, the thinking, and perspective. First, before anything else. And I think he touched on it. And that is where I want to focus this morning. And where else to go but the master of the theory of human motivation, Maslow's theory of human motivation, also called the hierarchy of needs. And if you look at this, Corporate organizations understand this and have embraced it in its entirety. So let's map it. Physiological need. Eh? Food, shelter, clothing. Your salary takes care of it, correct? Safety needs. Let's pick on medical. If you are an employee, you don't know what it is to pay for medical expenses out of your pocket, correct? Love and belongingness. You people have started playing interdepartmental football inside your office, eating together, doing parties, correct? Esteem. Just the nature of the rung of the ladder in the corporates. One step after another with varying benefits for each level. And even in recent times, we've seen, oh, civility and respect as a conversation come to the fore. However, when you put your ears down, you hear, it's not my father's business. When you put your ears down here, it's another man's dream. When you put your ears down, they should just give me my salary, let me be going, je, 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 je. And that's because something is lacking. What is lacking? Self-actualization. 
the singular most important ingredient for transiting a plain employee into entrepreneurial mode. Until you get to entrepreneurial mode, ain't no innovation coming out of you. But I want you to see the com commonality. Remember in the definition we saw something. Self-motivated. Now we are seeing another thing, what? Self-actualization. Employees, I'm talking to you this morning. And the corporates know this, that there's a gap in self-actualization. What is self-actualization? Being the best you can be, that thing, that fire burning inside of you that is chasing you up and down, and you too, you are chasing it up and down. What do corporates do? Cell division. Severe corporate indoctrination going on. This is me, oh. 22 years ago, I joined a company. I left not too long ago. Just meet me after this session. Ask me mission and vision. I will read it from the beginning to the end, and I will not open anything. Evidence. But they are selling their vision to you. This approach by corporates is in denial of one simple fact. Man is what? And as negative as that sounds, I'm going to deviate and I'm going to say embrace it. Very daring. Embrace it. And I think that what corporates need to consider doing and I'm not here for the corporates, I'm actually here for the employees, is approach this thing differently. You have to enable, help the individual find his own vision in the context of the vision of the corporate. If not, he will not latch on. He will not latch on, I promise you. So, what should corporates do? Enable that conversation in the workplace. I even advocate actively that we consider having self-actualization workshops, holding up front when people join in the course of their journey, making sure that they can find themselves and their future along the way. So just stay with me. What do successful entrepreneurs know? They don't define work like you and I do. You know that place that we just go and get salary and then based on it, we eat, we travel abroad, we buy gold, we enjoy ourselves. No, that's not how they see work. For them, work is a platform. If you don't remember anything that I've said today, remember this. Work is a platform. Work is a platform. And you ask me, did they a platform for what? It's very easy for me to say a platform to self actualize. But that's not uh, putting it properly. Let's go into workshop mode for a minute. A platform to, there's a gap there, fill it in with your dream. And I typically say something and people will laugh. If your real joy will come from Atilogu dancing, put it, work is a platform to actualize my Atilogu dancing. It doesn't matter how far-fetched that thing that drives you, that thing that gives you joy, filling the gap. Have you filled in your gap? Some people are afraid to fill in that gap. <laughs> fill it in, fill it in. Okay, and then let's move. What is this work is a platform? Just work is a platform when you remember or consider that your life is one line, maybe straight, bent, but it's one line. Beginning to the end, the end being that your dream. And then the job is a certain point in time in that life. But you know, if your mentality is 
this is the place that I just go and collect my money at the end of the month, and I go out and I take my babe and I carry my wife and my children, they go and do jumping somewhere. It's just very small-minded. Forgive me, but we are here to speak the truth. Do you know that work is the place where you first develop success habits? Discipline. Yvonne talked about reading. Very, very important. Punctuality. They don't come upon you by Holy Spirit on your bed. They just don't. Work is where we onboard skills, including our social skills, how we navigate society successfully. Work is where opportunities find us, and there are a plethora of stories where people in the course of their job came upon something, and that completely transformed their life. Work is the early stages of your network. Your net worth has nothing to do with the money in your bank account. Am I correct? It is your network. I don't know anywhere that offers you that kind of network. Regulators, you meet. Colleagues, you meet. Customers, you meet. Ah, ah, all sorts of people come and meet you at work. And somebody is saying that uh, work is, what's that thing? Where you go and collect salary. Work is where we find mentors and sponsors. And let me just stop here and say something quickly. Because in recent times, I've heard this thing quite a bit. Mentor, sponsor, the twin words. Yeah, your mentors, they provide guidance, people who have walked the path that you want to walk. And every time you need help, you run to them. Correct. Sponsors, your advocate, they are in the room. They open doors for you. They speak up for you. Correct. Did anybody ever pause to tell you that you choose your mentors, but your sponsors choose you? Let's take it a notch higher. It doesn't matter how many times you say the man is your sponsor. He is not your sponsor till he says so. Stop playing. Ah, this sponsor matter. Eh? Let's go up again. The man is selfish. Because your sponsor sees you as an extension of his own brand. Nobody is going to adopt you if you will diminish him. If you like, be singing it left, right, and center. Those are the people that open doors for you. Abby? But even more importantly is the fact that this person you call your sponsor, it presupposes that he was watching you. Those of you who are disengaged from work, he was watching you. And guess what? <laughs> He may not even work in your organization. He may not work in your organization. He may be your regulator. He may be a customer. He can be anybody. And he has been watching you. There is an interview that happens before the interview. And you have been going through it. You didn't know. <laughs> So the people who actually are able to anchor themselves in work are the ones who accrue these benefits. If you are disengaged, you can never accrue these benefits. It's just the simple truth. But let me say something quickly. There's something interesting about when you understand how work is a platform. Your energy just changes. I've been there, I'm telling you. Others, they spoke to me somehow. Other small, small things that touch your skin. Because you realize that what you are in this for is much bigger than somebody talking to you anyhow. Uh, he um, was um, 
quoting scripture. Let me just quote small. Let it not be as if we are not inside church. Eh? <laughs> so they suffered. They learned what? Obedience. By what? The things they suffered. There's one scripture I've been enjoying recently. God said he put, when the children of Israel reach promised land, he put some problem people for them so that the children who did not know war might know war. If the God that created you said you need to know war, you, you say no, it's soft life. Ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you are taking my time, oh. <laughs> Okay. But you know what? Let's even agree that some people are in this thing for salary. No problem. Mm -hmm. But it's salary that gives you the stability. And let me tell you about this man. David Solomon is CEO at Goldman Sachs. Top investment banking firm in the world. Mm -hmm. What he really likes is music. Do you know he's an active practicing DJ? Google him. I'm not guessing. I follow him on Instagram. He has two Instagram pages, David Solomon and David Solomon Music. So they play. <laughs> so, so what have we learned? That you work for yourself before you work for anybody else. It is in Didi and Co PLC that is the agency to wherever I'm working. You can't stop me. You cannot exit me. I will exit on my terms. When I choose to exit, because I understand the value of work in my future. It's the truth. But then there is another lesson. If you are writing, call it lesson two. I've discovered... And I think he consistently spoke to it. The last time it was a platform, he also did. Truth be told. And I was shocked when I found that Adam Smith said this so many years ago. Ad Adam Smith is considered the father of modern day economics. He said it doesn't matter how selfish a man is. You know, we have acknowledged that. But there is something in him that interests him in the fortune of others. To render their own happiness, even though it, he derives nothing from it. I've worked with incredibly successful entrepreneurs. They are always disrupting other people's lives. They never talk about it. I mean, I'm coming to tell you now. So beyond your own dealing, you have to activate something else which is giving. And there's always the science. If you have never read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, go and read it. It will transform your life. Covey speaks of the circle of concern. But the circle of influence is where I want to focus. And my problem with the circle of influence really is what you can influence. You know, we are all influencers. It's not your blue tick. Right? We are all influencers. But you know, more often than not, we define it so narrowly. Me, myself, and I, my gate man, and children. Let me give you an exciting charge. Work is a platform indeed. It is work that you find security. T-girl, messenger, colleagues, People from all walks of life, God has gifted them to you to change their story. I've worked in an organization where we had this T girl, we call her by her acronym JJ. And this girl was smart. So the people in the branch forced her to go back to school, paying her first year fees. JJ is on course to make a first class in one of Nigeria's universities. That's not what I find exciting. I'll tell you what I find exciting. Do you realize that as a result of disrupting JJ, you have disrupted her community? Nobody in that community can just think that all that they can do is to sell granite in front of the house because somebody has dreamt differently. 
Redefine your circle of influence. Be generous about it. And we are gradually coming to a close. You say, Didi, where is the revolution? Uh-uh. Were you not here? We just, one revolution just passed now. The one that happened inside you now. But there is a second revolution. The cross-pollination that happens when people transit from employee to intrapreneur to entrepreneur. Like Mrs. Yewande Zacchaeus who will be speaking to us today. You know this woman left finance and by herself just created a brand new industry in Nigeria. Correct. Maybe you don't know. Who was decorating her when you were wedding before? When your parents were dead? Is it not Fanta and Coke they put in front with cake? <laughs> when entrepreneurs move to entrepreneurial organizations and go and sit on their boards. Something else that is very exciting, because these people started serving when nobody could see them. They are crisscrossing industries like crazy. Yes, Jackpot is happening. That's the truth. And you say, this is so idealist. <laughs> it's amazing how we have all been talking about India. And we're talking about India again today. Do you realize that China, the world's manufacturing hub, was an entrepreneurial revolution? India is largely an intrapreneurial revolution. You cannot discuss tech today if you don't touch India. Indians have taken over a lot of the tech global brands. At least I'm happy that he, then we'll, Chuka, they will confirm me too if I'm lying. But I put pictures, confirm that those are the people. Eh? <laughs> you can't talk about the medical sciences without speaking about India. Indians control the soft and hard infrastructure of the UK. There are over a million Indian doctors operating in the USA. They jackpot. Then they jackpotted. And then the entire Africa is traveling to India, medical tourism. More than China. In fact, double China. India has remittances $100 billion annually. Meeting 25% of their FX requirement as a nation. Nigeria's unemployment is at 41%. Because of this revolution, India is consistently churning out people. Those who will stay, those who will go out, those who will sit on boards. Exchange rates. You are crying, Abby. Do your part. Let exchange rates come down. But remember where it started. Change your mentality. Work is a platform. So, in closing... <laughs> <laughs> Don't they tell you about this thing? Okay, let me just say it out on behalf of all of us. Your salary is the bribe they give you to forget your dreams. Oh, hmm. let me just help you. The next time anybody says that to you, I want you to ask them a few questions. Who were Fola Adiola and Aig Imokwede before Continental Merchant Bank? Fola Adiola and Tayo Adirinoku. A lot of people remember them for guarantee trust. But there was a beginning before there was a beginning. Who are or were Aig Imokwede and Herbert Wigwe before GT Bank? Before, no, before GT. They served in GT Bank as entrepreneurs, graduated to entrepreneurship with Access Bank, Developed Nigeria's biggest retail banking franchise, 40 million customers and counting. Who was Sheryl Sandberg before Google and Facebook? If money means anything to you, this woman is valued at $2.3 billion. And she was an entrepreneur until, I think she, early this year, announced that she was leaving Facebook after navigating them successfully and the super workhorse in Dranoi, born, bred, raised in India, 
grew all the way to become chief executive officer at PepsiCo International. That woman, they walk. She transformed that place. But then, in doing that transformation, it gave her a platform. Today, she's an advocate, a bestseller of the book, My Full Life. Cheryl is an advocate, two-time New York Times bestseller, option B, dealing with grief, leaning, which she named, which she has now evolved to develop an organization around. Aigimokwede is also a bestseller, now actively disrupting civil service. You know, he said something about problem is where there's opportunity. We, we are still there talking about salary. These people have moved. He's disrupting the, the civil service. Fola Adiola is credited with stabilizing our pension backbone in this country. And that will be the basis of long-term infrastructural development. So I ask you again, is salary the bribe that they give you to forget your dream? Or is work a platform? Just they play. Hi there, my name is Kojimari, senior pastor of the Covenant Nation and owner of the platform and 